So welcome. My name is James Johnson and my expertise lies in retirement and estate planning. And what this seminar is going to be about today is it's going to be about the one secret to claiming Social Security. So when it comes to Social Security, it's important to understand that in order to retire, you have to have one thing. And what that one thing is, is a paycheck. So you're not retiring without it. People say, well, I got a million dollars. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Whatever that amount of money is, it has to create a paycheck. After all, why do you go to work? Go to work so you have a steady stream of income that you can live on. Now, most people's paychecks are going to be made up of a couple things. They're going to be made up of their Social Security, pension, if they're lucky enough to have one, possibly some rental incomes, things like that. Now, for the average earner across America, their Social Security is going to amount to about 40% of what their paycheck needs to be in order to retire. But it's important to understand that for most of you, you're probably not the average earner. The average earner would be the top 25% of all taxpayers in America. And it's important to understand that the top 25% of all taxpayers in America, joint household income, AGI, before deductions, for two incomes is $84,077. Now here in Southern California, if you're living on $84,077 in joint income, you're probably living just above the poverty level. So for most average earners, it would be 40%. And then the balance of what they need in their paycheck, because understand you need a paycheck, you have how much you need to live on, and then you have a gap between the two. And that gap will need to be made up from other income sources, such as your retirement plans, IRAs, 401ks, annuities, brokerage accounts, 403Bs, 457, defined benefit plan, and what other, whatever other investments that you have. So going forward, it's important to remember that you've got to have a paycheck, and where is that paycheck going to come from? So let's talk about the relationship between the high and low benefits when filing for Social Security. Now, if your FRA, your full retirement age, is 66 or 66 in two months, four months, six months, eight months, whatever the case may be, then that means that if you were to take your Social Security at the earliest age, which would be age 62, your check would be something like $1,125. And that would be a 25% reduction off of what your full retirement age would be. Now, if you wait to your full retirement age, then you're going to get your entire amount of Social Security. There'll be no phase out on it. And that Social Security would be $1,500. But if you continue to wait out until age 70, then you're going to get $1,980 which means that you get 76% more money than you would have got by filing at age seven, at 62. It's important to understand that Social Security is the one thing and the only thing that increases by 8% guaranteed every single year you wait. So often it makes more sense to wait, yet many people make the mistake of taking it too early because they think they have to. Now, if your full retirement age is 67, like myself, or your FRA, then that means that you have a 30% cut or reduction by taking it at an earlier age of 62. You get 100% at age, at age 67, your full retirement age, and then you would get 1860, which is 124% of what you would have got over that period of time. So you can see that there's some benefit to waiting in most cases, but not all. So what's the big secret? Well, the big secret is very simple. All you have to do is tell me the day you're going to die, and I swear to you, I can create you a plan that we will bounce your last check. But based on the fact that you cannot tell me the date that you or your spouse is going to die, I highly suggest that you live like you're going to die tomorrow and you plan like you're going to live forever because you just might. And I can't tell you which one it's going to be. So when you are doing your retirement planning, you need to make sure that your plan goes out to and beyond life expectancy. And understand, people are living longer. 
People say, well, I'll never live that long. Well, I would tell you that when you're doing your planning, always do it out to at least age 100. And if you do live that long, then at least you plan for it. If you don't live that long, then so be it. A little bit more money goes on to your heirs. So what if I die at age 70? What if I die at 66? All of these are really good questions. But what if you don't would be the question. The big deal here is everybody always wants to know at what point, if I was to take my Social Security at 62 and I lived so long, at what point would it make sense? And this is called a break-even point. Now, you're going to be allowed at the end of this to get a free strategy session on your Social Security to find out exactly when is the best time to take your Social Security. Now, when you sign up for that, be sure to bring your most recent Social Security report if you have one. And if you have a pension, be sure to bring all of your years of earnings so that we can figure out what your GPO and WEP are going to be on that. But what we're going to show you at that point is we're going to show you a chart. And in this particular chart here, you can see at age 85 and, and age 75 for the other person that the blue choice is better than the red choice. So now there might be four or five colors on there when it comes time to do this. But when you get done with that session, you're actually going to have a really good idea when the best time is to take your Social Security and what is better than the other one. So. The question that always comes up is, well, what if we need cash flow sooner? Well, that might very well be the case. But often people take Social Security because they think they have to, when in fact they could be using their other assets to create the income stream that they need, the paycheck, and let their Social Security grow up to a better number so that it lasts longer and their assets last longer. And that's the importance of sitting down with somebody like me that can use some very sophisticated software to show you not only what your Social Security does, but also what your current retirement planning is doing and whether that retirement planning is actually going to get you there. And more importantly, can we do some things to change it to maybe reduce your taxes, reduce your long-term taxes, and pass your money on in the most tax-effective way to your heirs and be sure to live the lifestyle you've become accustomed to adjusted for inflation and taxes out through your lifetime. Now, when we're looking at that, as I told you, there'll be different choices. So on this one, you can see here, there, there are actually three colors, which means we're looking at three different alternatives. There's the suggested alternative, the earliest alternative, and the regular alternative. And every person gets this same report when they sit down and do that free strategy session which will help them to make the wise decision on how to take their Social Security. So when we're comparing those strategies, we can see up here on the top that the recommended strategy would give us $1,157,040 over our life expectancy. The second strategy would give us $1,113,000. And the earliest strategy would give us $964,000. Well, if we didn't know what we were doing and we took that earliest strategy because we thought we had to, that's literally a $193,000 difference out of your life expectancy. That's a pretty considerable number to be taking out of your income. So the next thing to understand is why we don't necessarily want to be taking our money at age 62 because there's rules that you probably haven't considered. And the first one is the earning limits. So at age 62, if you make more than $21,240 in earned income, they're going to phase your Social Security out on a two to one. So every $2 you make above that number, they're gonna take back $1 in Social Security. So let me give you an example. Let's say that your Social Security was $10,000 for the entire year. And in this particular case, you made $41,240. Well, what that would mean is, is that you had $20,000 above the $21,240. And so they would charge you back all $10,000 worth of Social Security. And you are now locked in 
at that low rate and can't fix that. Well, there is a one exception. You can fix it if you get it done within a year, but the reality is, is you're probably not going to know that rule, file the right forms, and do all that stuff, so you locked in your Social Security for the rest of your life. Now, if you wait to take your Social Security to the year you turn FRA, your full retirement age, you can make up to $56,520 up to the month in the year you turn full retirement age, and it's a three to one phase out on that point. So the reality on that is, is that you probably should be rating until at least full retirement age, unless of course you're married and then there might be some strategies where it makes sense to take it earlier, depending upon whether you're working or not. Now, if you wait until your full retirement age and you take it after your full retirement age, there's absolutely no limits on your earnings. You could make $50 million a year and it will have no effect on how much your Social Security is. Now, it will still have some effect on your taxes, but it'll have no effect on that. So what if I've already filed? I, I went out and I, I didn't go to this class. I didn't know anything about Social Security and I filed at 62 and now I'm 62 in six months or 62 and just about to turn 63. And I discovered I didn't want to do that. That was a big mistake. Well, the government gives you a one-time do-over. And that what that is, is that allows you to go back and stop your Social Security, suspend it, file a Form 521, and then pay back all the Social Security that you took and let your Social Security go back to growing up. Now, if you waited until full retirement age and you took it and you came here and discovered that maybe you wanted to let it go, you could still suspend your Social Security, but because you took it after full retirement age, you don't have to pay back the benefits and they would go back to growing up. Now, these are all questions that we could answer in your free strategy session, but understand there is a do-over if you messed up, so don't worry too much about that. So why not just ask the Social Security Administration for advice? Well, SSA looks to get the highest monthly benefit on the day you file. SSA cannot give you advice. It cannot coordinate benefits with outside assets. I always tell my clients, I say, look, don't focus on one thing. Don't focus on your Social Security. Don't focus on your IRA or annuity, any of that kind of stuff. You need to take a 100,000 foot view. How can I get all of these assets to work together in the most tax advantage way going forward and optimize them, not only for myself and my spouse, but for my family going forward? Social Security Department is not going to be able to do that. Social Security Department is going to look at what your statement is, see what it says, which is missing a lot of information, okay, and make the determination as to what the best way is for you to take it on that day. That does not mean there's not a better way to take it on a different day. So five reasons to get professional advice. And when I say professional advice, I do mean professional advice. I mean somebody that actually is specialized in Social Security and knows what they're talking about. Not just my guy at the bank and he told me that blah, blah. They really need to know what they're talking about when it comes to this. They need to have software that's specialized in Social Security to give you some really accurate numbers. So be careful about where you're getting that professional advice. Social Security eligibility and benefits calculations. An advisor can give you and understand the eligibility criteria for Social Security benefits and calculate the amount you could potentially receive based on your work history and earnings and future earnings inside of them and coincide that with your spouse if you're married. Now, it takes special software to do that, and you need to be specialized in this area, so be careful who you ask and make sure that they're specialized in Social Security. Maximizing your benefits. They can help you to determine the best strategy for maximizing your Social Security benefits, such as when to claim and how to coordinate benefits with other sources of retirement income, as I said. Understanding the impact of claiming early or late. The reality is, as I showed you before, if you claim your Social Security too early, that is going to have an effect on your Social Security based on how much money you make. Now, there are other situations like divorce and or deceased, in other words, you're a widower or a widower, 
that could be a problem, all right? And you need to know how those rules work and what the best way is to claim them. Keeping up with changes in Social Security. Well, it doesn't change often, but it does change. And you want to know what those rules are going to be, if not today, tomorrow when it comes time to take it. And then you need to have a holistic financial plan. Social Security laws and rules can change over time and advisors can help you stay up to date with the latest developments and how they might affect your benefits. There's some changes coming. They're coming down the road here pretty soon. And without some changes to government, they're likely to happen. So what's the value of professional financial advice? Well, first off, we're going to get a Social Security analysis report. Second, we're going to do a retirement analysis report. And what we're going to do that's the most important thing is we're going to determine where you are financially. And based on where you are financially and where you're planning on going, will your plan get you there? We're going to ask the, answer those four most important questions for you. I would ask you, has your advisor answered the four most important questions with regards to your retirement? What rate of return do I need to make on my investments in order to live the lifestyle I've become accustomed to, adjusted for inflation and taxes, and not run out of money past my life, my lifespan? How much money will I need to save to do the same thing? How long will I have to work? When can I stop working and have enough money to not run out? And then the worst one, how much would I have to cut my lifestyle by in order to get there? These are all very, very important questions, and in any comprehensive financial plan, those questions should get answered for you. Now, once we figure that out, okay, then we're going to figure out how to fill the gaps. And remember, I told you, you have your known incomes down here, you have your needs up here, and there's a gap between the two, and we need to figure out how to fill those gaps. So most of those gaps are going to be filled with your retirement accounts, such as your Roth IRAs, IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, etc. Now, all of these accounts have their own pros and cons. And now, I could sit here and talk to you for hours just on the subject of retirement accounts and tax deferral and tax-free and taxes in general. I'm not going to get that deep into that in this seminar. There's plenty of other videos that you can go out here and watch on our YouTube page to learn about that. But some of the pros to the, the accounts is you have a potential for matching from your employer. And no matter what you ever hear from me, remember that if your employer has a match, then you want to make sure that you put in up to that match. Because anything less than that, not very smart. They're paying your future taxes and you want to do that. Now, whether you put in above that match, we could have a very long conversation on that. But for most of you, you probably should not contribute above your match. You should be putting that money in tax-free rather than deferring taxes, which in fact you're not deferring taxes. What you're actually deferring is the calculation. Now, in addition to that, you maintain some control over your accounts. They're tax deductible when you contribute to them. So in other words, you put in money before taxes, and then when you take it out, it's all taxable. Now, the cons are you have potential loss due to market risk, and it's important to understand that doesn't have to be that way. There are actually ways to take your qualified accounts and get some of the gains of the market and not participate in the losses. As a matter of fact, today, it's now 2023, February of 2023, there are fixed rate products out there today between five and six percent fixed rates over the next five years. That's a pretty good deal. And I can tell you four or five years down the road, you're going to wish you had those rates because that's a pretty good deal. There's fully taxable at distribution except for your Roth IRAs and you take the risk of investment decisions and income distribution. Now, in addition to that, we're going to have investments. We're going to have our dividends and, and interest from stocks, bonds, mutual funds, certificates of disappointment, etc. And what happens on these are these are our tax as we go money. And so at the end of the year, we get a 1099. And that 1099, we have to pay taxes on it. It goes into our adjusted gross income and we get taxed at whatever level we have. Now, the pros to them is we maintain control over the accounts. We have a potential for tax advantage forms of income, such as long-term capital gains. And those rules are changing all the time. 
and taxes are paid on earnings only. So we're using after-tax money, so we only pay taxes on earnings. Now the cons are, you still have to pay taxes. It's a potential for loss due to market risk, once again, depending upon how you invest. Subject to reinvestment risk, there are no guarantees of principal growth, protection, or income. You take the investment decision and income distributions. You take the risk of all of that. Now, annuities. I always laugh when people, I say annuities because I watch people just cringe. I think it's important to understand what an annuity really is. An annuity is a savings account with an insurance company. And if you think about it, Insurance companies have more money than banks, and as a matter of fact, banks keep 25% of all their tier one liquid assets in insurance companies. So it's probably a pretty good place to keep your money. But you always wanna know why you're buying something before you get into this, and that's why the professional advice is so helpful. So know the difference. There's variable index fixed and immediate annuities. Now the pros are you maintain control over your account. It's a non-qualified, if it's non-qualified money, it becomes tax deferred, meaning you're not gonna get a 1099 in it every year, and you only pay taxes when it comes out. And no mandatory distributions on non-qualified money. Now, you can actually put qualified money in an annuity. So annuity is the container that holds the money, I'm sorry, the, the, the determination of its taxability is a container that holds the money. So in other words, if it's a non-qualified money, it would end up in tax deferred. If it was an IRA, it would be tax deferred. But if it was a Roth IRA, it would be tax free. So the taxability of it depend, determines by the title of the account. Is it an IRA, non-qualified, or Roth IRA? There's potential for guaranteed principal growth and income for life. The one thing that an annuity can do that nothing else can do is it can guarantee you a stream of income that you can't outlive no matter how long you live. You can outlive the money, but you don't outlive the income. And remember, in order to retire, you need one thing, and that is a paycheck. I would tell you that for most people, they should probably own an annuity as part of their portfolio for their income strategy planning. Now they often require longer commitments. So where we would put money in a CD might be as short as one year, where an annuity might be three years to five years, or even 10, depending upon what we're trying to accomplish. Now in addition to that, there's permanent life insurance. Now I can tell you that most people have no idea what life insurance is. They, what they understand is they understand death insurance. You buy the most insurance using the least amount of money for the purpose of dying. Now that rule is set by the insurance company. The reality is, is if you really know what life insurance can do, you understand that you can grow your money tax-free, you can access up to 85% of it at any time tax-free, you can put it back if you want. You can get most of the gains of the market, never participate in the losses, and when you die, it passes on to two to three times that amount tax-free. Now, would you want to do that? Of course you would. And if you understood, and if people understood what you could do with life insurance, what you could do with your insurability, there would be lines of people miles long outside my office trying to get in the door to get it because it really truly is a fantastic asset to be using for your retirement and estate planning and most people have no idea. But some of the pros are you can control your account, you can get income tax, free loans and withdrawals up to cost basis. There are no penalties for early access. There's no required minimum distributions. And if you don't use it while you're alive, you leave it to your heirs, leveraged up in a death benefit. But one of the downsides to it is it takes some time to get a plan running and you must get qualified for it. So in addition to that, when you come to get your social security report, and remember, there's no cost to you to do this, you simply have to set up the time to do it. Be sure to bring in with you at, at that meeting, whether we do it on Zoom or whether we do it in person, your social security statements. Some other handy ha items to have around would be your other financial documents, trust, wills, um, your social security statement, certainly your tax return. Okay, Those are all things that are gonna be very important to do your planning going forward. 
So all you have to do to set up that no cost, no obligation appointment is to take your phone right now and scan this code right here or take the time to go type in that calendar link right there and set up your timing report review, okay? We'll go in, we'll, we'll set that up for you, we'll do it really, really quick, and then we'll talk about how we can set up a free financial plan for you going forward and see if it's not broke, if your system is broken or not. Now, key here, remember this, when you come to this appointment, leave your checkbook at home, because you don't get to buy anything. There'll be nothing for sale there. The purpose of that Social Security timing report is to figure out what are you doing, what does your plan look like, and what are you doing to get and make sure you never run out of money in your lifetime. And then, if we can make it better, then we'll go to do that. So remember, good, better, best. Never let it rest So good gets better and better gets best. You can go to our website. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel below. There's plenty of videos out there to watch. And what I would tell you is I always say, remember to live like you're gonna die tomorrow and plan like you're gonna live forever because you just might. Thank you for watching. Be sure to go watch the other videos and don't forget to set up your appointment. Make it a great day. Keep smiling now.